Summary. The novel has 31 chapters divided into two parts. Part 1. The novel opens when Scout is 6 years old and her brother Jem is 10. During the summer, Dill moves to their town in Maycomb, Alabama, and the three become close friends and playmates. Their games often focus on Arthur Boo Radley, a local recluse who's rumored to be crazy. They dare each other to run up and touch his house. The following summer, the Radley-related games pick up again, at least until Boo's brother, Nathan, fires a shotgun at the kids, driving them away from the house. As Jem runs away, however, his overalls get caught and he has to abandon them. When he goes back for them later that night, he finds that they've been mended. How? The kids have also been finding small gifts left for them in a tree near the Radley house. Are the gifts coming from Boo? They plan to contact Boo by leaving a note in a knot hole of the tree, but they discover that Nathan has filled them all with cement. During this time, the children have also become closer friends with Miss Maudie, a nearby widow who teaches Scout about gardening, religion, and life, including being more accepting of Boo Radley. The trouble begins brewing late in Part 1. Other children start teasing Scout at school because her father, the best lawyer in Maycomb, will represent black defendants. Even members of Scout's own family, like her cousin Frances, make fun of her because of Atticus. This is overshadowed, though, by Atticus shooting a rabid dog in the street, a brave act that shows Scout and Jem their father is not the dull figure they had thought he was. Part 2. This is the bulk of the novel. It focuses on the trial of Tom Robinson, a black man who is unjustly accused of raping a white woman. When Calpurnia, the Finch's strict but loving housekeeper, takes the children with her to visit the black church, some members of the congregation criticize her for doing so, thus further exposing the ongoing racial tension in Maycomb. When they return home from church, they find Aunt Alexandra sitting in the front porch. Scout learns that her aunt will be living with them for a while to help raise her to be a lady, in part because Atticus has been raising her alone, and in part because he must focus on the upcoming trial. Soon after that, a group of men visit Atticus at home and express their concern over his defending Tom. Jem breaks up the heated discussion by telling Atticus he has a phone call. Later that night, Atticus goes to the jail to make sure nothing happens to Tom. A lynch mob gathers, but in an act of extreme bravery, Scout addresses one of the mob's leaders, Walter Cunningham, and reminds him that she goes to school with his son. This personal connection brings Cunningham to his senses, and he gets the mob to disperse. Forbidden to attend the trial, Scout and Jem sneak in anyway and sit with the black attendees in the balcony. As they watch, they see Atticus in his element, politely yet masterfully questioning witnesses. Tom Robinson is revealed to be a man of good character, and the wounds the victim suffered show that he could not have been the rapist. Even so, Tom is found guilty by the white jury. Atticus expected this and thinks he can appeal the case and win. Despite the guilty verdict, Bob Ewell, the father of the alleged rape victim, threatens Atticus. Soon after, unconvinced that he'll ever be able to get a fair trial, Tom attempts to escape. He is shot and killed. That fall, Scout takes part in the school Halloween pageant. She and Jem are attacked on the way home. Scout can't see what happens because she's dressed in a costume, but she knows there's a struggle, that someone's lying on the ground, and that someone else is carrying Jem home. Scout follows and learns that they were rescued by Boo Radley. The famed recluse left his home to save his only friends. The dead man is Bob Ewell, whom Boo stabbed. Atticus and the sheriff agree, however, to say that Bob accidentally fell on his knife because sometimes not telling the truth is the only right thing to do.